Because I saw something this morning, folks, that was truly something. And certain people watching might not like this topic because they mindlessly believe whatever the government tells them, whatever the deep state tells them, not naming any names. But, you know, I was one of the original Russiagate doubters, if you remember me at the Young Turks. I'm not naive. Of course, Russia tries to mess with the United States, just like the United States has always tried to mess with Russia. I mean, hell, we swung, we rigged the 1996 election in Russia for Boris Yeltsin. Go ask Matt Taibbi who was there. Go ask other journalists who were there. After the fall of the Soviet Union, our little private vultures privatized the entire Russian economy. So let's not pretend. Um, let's not pretend, you know, we're so innocent here. So I was one of the original Russiagate critics. I thought it was bullshit. Yeah, fake Facebook pages and stuff like that. You know, it didn't sway the election. And secondly, uh, I said, I don't care what you say. I don't see any proof, forensic proof, that Russia hacked the DNC. And what do you know? Came out a few weeks ago. The CEO of CrowdStrike, who was the third party cybersecurity firm, said under oath, yeah, we didn't actually have any proof of the data actually leaving the DNC. Russia tried but we don't have conclusive evidence that they actually took the ev- uh, took the data. Oh, really? So we've been going through this cyber cold war espionage thriller for four years with no conclusive evidence? Gee whiz. But this headline today really was just something else. U.S. officials say intel on Russia, Russian bounties was less than conclusive. But that misses the big picture. But the debate over that narrow issue obscures a larger consensus. U.S. intel agencies have long assessed that Russia backs our enemies in Afghanistan. Oh my God, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. So, the New York Times mindlessly regurgitated unnamed spooks from the CIA or whichever department that said Russia has been paying the Taliban bounties to kill U.S. soldiers. Those spooks probably provided no evidence of such, and the New York Times just regurgitated it. And then the Washington Post and the CNN rushed to say, well, we've confirmed this on our end by just talking to the same unnamed spooks. But now, the, you know, me, Glenn Greenwald, you know, Aaron Maté, all the usual, we're saying this, is, this reeks of bullshit. Now they're saying, oh, here's more agencies are saying, yeah, we don't actually have any evidence of this. It's not really conclusive. Eh, we just kind of, you know, there's some tea leaves, this and that. But who, regardless, who really cares? That's not, you're missing the big picture if you're focused on the bounties. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wasn't the big picture that Russia was paying or incentivizing Taliban with money per U.S. soldier? They killed? What, what, what's bigger than that? You told us that was true. Now you're saying, well, there's no conclusive evidence of such, but that's neither here or there. It's really neither here or there. Let's not focus on, and I quote, that narrow issue. Does Russia back our enemies in Afghanistan? Of course Russia backs our enemies in Afghanistan. We've got a gazillion rockets on Turkey's border facing Russia. I'm not like, I'm not an asset of Russia. I don't think Putin's a good guy. He's a, he's a corrupt cryptocrat, homophobic. But like, re- reality is reality. NATO expansion, I mean, Russia's got rockets every which way facing them. And the U.S. is behind all of that. 
So does Russia have incentive for us to be bogged down in Afghanistan? Yeah. Would Russia be backing the Taliban and others? Yeah. But that's different than are they paying bounties per American soldier that the Taliban can kill? It's just unbelievable. This is like, you know, I don't know. What's, what's a good metaphor or analogy? This is like saying to your friend, listen, I'm really sorry. I don't want to get involved, but I saw your wife, you know, with another man. I saw her at the mall. They were holding hands and kissing. I'm really sorry. And then like a few weeks later, you know, I really only saw saw from like the side view. It looked like Stacy, but you know, the cheeks looked the same and it was the same like eyeliner, but like I can't say for certainty it was her. But that's not the narrow issue. You see how flirt. Don't, let's not focus on the narrow issue of whether she actually is cheating on you or not. You see how flirty she is all the time. Sorry to, you know, compare endless war with your country club, your, you know, cardboard cutout domestic dispute, but I digress. I mean, Rachel Maddow. If you want to put yourself through this, I think she did a special weekend special. She got on air during the weekend, usually she's off, about this bounty gate. And now the same network that has been pushing this Russia bull for years is now backtracking, saying, yeah, it's not conclusive, but it's really not about the bounties. Who cares? That's neither here or there. A growing chorus of Russian, American officials have said in recent days that the intelligence suggesting... Russians paid bounties to induce the Taliban to kill American service members in Afghanistan is less than conclusive. But the debate about that narrow and contested issue distracts from a larger, often overlooked consensus, current and former military intelligence officials say. Oh, do they? After lying to the media, by the way, all of this lying came out just when the Taliban and Afghanistan government was meeting to try uh, for peace talks. U.S. intelligence agencies have, have assessed for years that Putin is supporting uh, America's enemies in Afghanistan with cash and weapons. And President Donald Trump has said nothing publicly about it. OK, well, what's the what is the evidence that U.S. intelligence agencies have to assess this? And by the way, this bullshit bounty thing that they're now backtracking, Joe Biden seized on Joe Biden seized on to it. Democratic Senate candidates have seized on to it. Everybody from Biden to Amy McGrath to the ladies at The View. I mean, just this afternoon, Jim Shudo, CNN's resident uh, journalist, the White House reporter who loves, loves, loves himself, pressed, uh, what's her face, Kaylee McEnany about it, who's obviously a paid liar, Trump's press secretary, citing Bounty Gate. There's no evidence of this. None. They're now backtracking. They're now saying, oh, you know, everybody's kind of, nobody agrees on this, but let's not focus on that. Let's not focus on the the narrow issue. It just, it's over and over and over again. These people get it wrong. Frankly, it's not like just minor mistakes. It's, How many stories now have been wrong about Russia? And there's no consequences. I mean, The Guardian still has up that Paul, what was it, Paul Manafort and Julian Exchange, Julian Assange were having secret meetings in the Ecuadorian embassy. No proof. Never happened. No other outlet could confirm it. McClatchy wrote that uh, Michael Cohen was in Prague doing shady things having to do with Russia. Mueller's report came out. Never happened. Frankly, you know, my old employer, the Young Turks, drank the Kool-Aid early and then 
Jank tried to backtrack, pretending, oh, no, I never believed any of that. Which is, you know, the least surprising thing ever. Democracy now, too? I like them, but they buy into this bull**** too. And the real outrage here is, look who excels and look who doesn't. I mean, we're in independent media clawing and scratching with our fingernails just to get our live stream seen, just to get our videos seen. Yet, all of this Russia hysteria, which is not backed up by conclusive facts, these people write books, they get on New York Times bestsellers, they get speaking gigs, they get cable news contributor jobs, which pay them well, all to keep continue this espionage driller that has no evidence. And then, when it comes out that there's no evidence, they then gaslight you. By the way, this guy, which is a disgrace in itself, pretending to be a reporter, used to work for the FBI. Now he's reporting whatever his former colleagues feed to him. I mean, it's just... In a sane, maybe long ago, journalism environment, people get fired for these types of things. You know, you mess up once in a blue moon, okay. You mess up over and over and over and over again, you lose your job. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.